Okay. It looks like I got good connection. You guys, come on in. Join in. I pray you guys' day is going well. I am having an off day today, so I, I got a couple minutes before I have to go pick up my kids um, from school. So I said, I'm going to jump on here really quick, and I was like, God, what do you want? Because you've just been moving. I know y'all been seeing my videos today, and I said, hi, honey. I've been saying the Spirit of God is moving. Even right now, I'm sitting here, and I'm still rocking back and forth because God is just in the atmosphere. Hi, 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 hi. Hi, everybody. I'm like, the Spirit of God is moving like never before. I just, you know... And I made a video about me being in the yard and um, planning, and then the people came up and we started talking. And then right after that, the neighbor said, oh, I got something for you. Gifted me a whole bunch of bananas and fruit. He's like, for your kids. And, you know, God is just in the gift-giving business. Even if it's something small, it's um, some bananas or whatever it is. God said, um, if you trust me, I can give you more. I'm going to give you more. Listen. Y'all, hi. How you guys doing today? I hope y'all day is good. I don't know if y'all are like me. You could just feel like, like I know I'm rocking back and forth because I just feel like it's a movement. It's a movement. It's a movement happening. Something's happening today. My emotions are everywhere, like everywhere. Listen, <laughs> it's crazy right now. It's crazy right now. My sister, you have such inspiration. You have no idea. Oh, thank you. <laughs> like, yes, yeah, it's, it's a movement. Like, I woke up today, and it was a full moon on my right. No, nope, it's my left. So it was a full moon on my left, and it was the sun literally gleaming on my right. And they both were just, like, neck and neck with each other. And I'm like, God, what you trying to tell me? What you trying to tell me? Yeah. Um, you say you feel confused. I'm just trying to learn the word. And there are so many opinions. Follow that voice that you hear. Not in other people's opinions. Everybody's going to have their own opinion. But you have to formulate your own relationship with God. No one else but you. Um, no, don't be. Don't, you can't. You got to. When you walk with Christ, you have to be able to have discernment. Which means you have to tune everybody out and listen to you and God. And he will send the right people your way. Listen, today's videos are so inspiring. Thank you. Listen, because I just, it's a movement happening. It's a movement happening. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Hi. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Listen. And um, I got a call today. He sent you. Oh, I got a call today. The devil is just so busy. He's so mad at me. Listen, when, like, and, and nobody really tells you this unless you, like, surrounded by the right people with Christ. When you start walking with Christ, uh, attacks are going to start happening. That's a part of the walk with him. Jesus got attacked. He did nothing but love everybody. He got killed and crucified because he did nothing but love everybody. When you walk with Christ, you're going to get crucified. You're going to get, you know, everyone's going to come at you. You're going to lose some things. People are going to try to assassinate your character and all kind of stuff. So I get a call today and they're telling me about my job and saying a girl had, one of the managers had quit and she said I made her cry and I'm just this mean person. This, this, and that. And I'm like, she said I yelled at her and I'm like, I ain't do none of that. And, you know, it, it hurt my feelings. I'm like, you know, because I'm not that kind of person. That's not my characteristic. Like, I don't just act out of character. I don't, that's not who I am. And, you know, I was talking with God, and he said, I'm going to be your vindicator. So when I get to work tomorrow, we're going to have this big old meeting and da-da-da-da. And it's just like, you know, this is my livelihood. This is my, this is how I take care of my kids. I'm not sole provider for my children. But God says, you trust me. Meaning, if you trust me, you trust me. I'm not going to let anything happen to you. And if you lose something, I will replace it. And he was like, do you think that my, that my call is going to be begging? You think that my call, my call child is going to be out here in the wilderness, not knowing what they're going to eat from, not being able to take care of her kids? Do you think that my child is going to do all of this? He says, I'm your vindicator. I'm going to come in on your behalf. You don't have to cry no more tears. You don't have to say who you are. You don't have to say your character. He's like, your character is going to speak for itself. As soon as I walk in the building, I'm going before you. I'm going before you even enter that building. Listen, God says, I'm doing a new thing in your life. You ain't got to fight no battles. God going to fight all your battles. They can lie still and can destroy, but they can't touch you. He says, everything around you may fall, but not, not you. Your household won't fall. Your kids won't be hungry. My child won't be begging. My child won't lack. My child won't go without. Not my child, not my call. They can destroy everything 
everything around you, but you're still going to stand. He was like, and all of them are going to have to answer for what they did. Since they're trying to assassinate my anointed, since they're trying to touch my anointed, they're going to have to answer to me. Listen, God says no weapon formed against you will prosper. Yes, they're over there formulating a weapon, trying to say I'm this, this, and that. And God said, but it ain't going to prosper. They're going to have to answer for everything that they're doing. Every characteristic trait they're trying to go up against you again. He's like, they're going to have to answer for all of that. And they're not ready for my wrath. My wrath ain't nothing nice. He was like, so they better make amends before you even walk in that building if they know what's good for you. Because when you walk in the building, you walk it in with the armor of God. You walk with angels right beside you. He's like, you ain't got to worry about nothing. Cry your last tear. Don't you dare go in there and talk about this is who I am. Don't you dare try to defend yourself. You sit there and you look at them like they slap crazy. If they're going to fire you, I'm going to bless you. Because you know who you are. You're going to walk away with your head held high. You know who you are, woman of God. You know that you're my call. He's like, if you think I'm going to let something get snatched from you, you better know I got something else in place of it. And you know how to walk out on faith. Listen. I ain't never scared when it come to God. Literally, literally that's why I ain't never scared. I ain't, listen, if I lose it, God gonna replace it with something better. Listen, I'm laughing because the devil thinks because he got this over here, you know, these some empty vessels and they doing the devil's work. And I'm laughing because that that's all y'all can do. Y'all can do the devil's work. But when God step in, baby, God ain't nothing nice. Listen, it took me back. And when I was, I was sitting out there, I was doing the laundry right here in my little laundry room. It took me back to David and Goliath and how Goliath was looking at David like, you little puny thing, like, what you going to do? This, this, and that. You know, David was fresh off the field and he came out there and he was like, what a slingshot at? Get this armor off of me that y'all trying to put up on me. Get this off of me. It's weighing me down. The weight is too heavy for me. That ain't for me. I know my I know my weapons. And see, my weapon is prayer. I'm not finna go in there crying some some wars me. My tears ain't my weapon. My prayer is my weapon. My God is my weapon. So when I walk in there, I don't need no personal nothing. Get this off me. Because when I walk in the building, I already know that God's going to vindicate me. And when I thought about Davis, all he needed, all he needed was, um... All he needed was his slingshot and some stones. And he knocked them out. You know what I'm saying? Then he cut his head off so he wouldn't go. But God spoke to me a little bit deeper. As David became king, right? Not only did he kill Goliath, he killed the rest of Goliath's family when he got there. Listen, God spoke to me in Chronicles, 1 Chronicles and, and chapter 20. Listen. Right here, I had to break it down for y'all. I know I had to pull the Bible out because God was sitting there with me. Because he says, not only will I go in there and vindicate you, I'm finna kill the whole bloodline that came along trying to touch you. He says, because they, they tried to put their hand on you, I'm finna go ahead and smite their whole family out since they tried to put their hand on you. Because it's not only you not just gonna kill one giant, you killing the whole lineage. When David became king, he came up against them in war again. And not only did he kill the Goliath in his younger years, when he became older, he went back and killed the rest of their behind. He said, because you gotta cut them off in the whole family and the whole lineage that way the generation and generation after that won't even try to come at you listen they david wasn't just a giant killer he was giant killers he killed every last one of them not he ain't the brother the what was it he had he had um six fingers here you go right here right here chapter 20 Verse 6, yet again the war at Gath, where there was a man of great stature with 24 fingers and toes, six on each hand and six on each foot, and he was also born a giant. Okay, and then I had to, I should have went back at the beginning. Those were the, there, those were the giants in Gath that fell by the hand of David and by the hands of the servants. So, not only did David kill Goliath, when he got older, he came for Goliath's family. He came for the rest of them giants that came to defeat him. And mind you, Goliath was nine foot, nine inches long. Like he was, he was a big giant. And you mean to tell me they had six fingers? So they had, they had so many advantages. You had the height advantage and you had the fingers. You had, you had one more extra finger than him. You already had the height. And then you had this, this doggone metal um, armor that was the size of a human that you had as a shield. You had all the advantage. And David was sitting there with a sling shot and a dog on uh, and, a, and a um stone and took you out just like that because he stood in his confidence and he had he knew who his God was and God had never left him nor God has ever forsaken him he knew who his God was and he stood on that God never left him out there in the field when his own daddy didn't care about him his own daddy and own brothers didn't care nothing about him so he was out there already like singing songs to the Lord writing the whole book of Psalms to the Lord like he was out there like God you the only thing out here you my best friend you my daddy you my everything you my protector I'm writing you these songs out of my own heart because I'm a man after your own heart because you just never left me and if faith is all you got to stand on that's the best thing that you could ever stand on 
I don't care what you fight in, in this lifetime. God is going to lift up a standard when it comes to you. I don't care who's all falling around you. You're going to remain strong. You're going to remain rooted. And that reminds me of why God had me come out here today and plant these seeds in this garden and plant these, these trees in this garden. He says, you are rooted. You are rooted. You have the nutrients. You are rooted in me. You are my child. Can't no hurricane come through and uproot you. Can't no storm come in to uproot you can't no flood out flood you you are rooted listen god said you have what i've been looking for you are the woman i've been looking for you are the man i've been looking for i've been searching and searching and searching and i finally found you with a heart like mine you are like me come on god says i've been looking for you and now i found you you are rooted you ain't going nowhere. I don't care who try to uplift you. Who try to uproot you. They can get a shovel and it's going to break when they go to push it in that ground. God says you are planted by God. Not by man. You are planted by God. Come on. Come on. Y'all, I ain't even. I don't even know what else to do, God. You just keep on coming. <laughs> Come on. God ain't playing in this season. I don't care what weapon is formed against you. I don't care. You not going to listen. You not going to go nowhere. God ain't on that. God ain't on that. God ain't on that. No. Mm -mm. God ain't that type of God. He ain't finna play with nobody when it come to you. When you cry, when that tear fall from your eyes, watch what God do. That's their problem. When they made that tear come from your eye, I fear for them. Woe to them, whoever made a tear fall from your eye. Not only is God collecting those tears and giving you a harvest from that, he's collecting those tears and taking it back to those enemies and like, look what you did to my child. Now, what do you think I'm going to do to you? What do you think I'm going to do? Somebody got to pay for the tears that just fell from my child's eyes. Somebody got to pay for it. And they already cried. So since my baby back there crying, tell my God, help me. What do you think I'm about to do? And my baby prayed and said, God, forgive them for they know not what they do. My baby sitting over here saying, God, I pray for them because hurt people hurt people. My baby came to me saying, Father, help me and help them on along the way. You, oh no, my baby is too, 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 I'm humble in this. So I got to come in. I got to come in because my child didn't even want, want me to come do nothing to you. My child didn't even pray for vengeance. My child prayed that you get healed. And since my child is all the way humble watch what i do for my child you not you not finna come around here and try to bully my child i bully the bullies you got my child messed up because my child not gonna say nothing to you because she know her daddy and he know her he know his daddy i'm gonna come in since you want to be a big bad bully i right, i'm gonna show you who created bullies how about that listen god ain't finna come playing he coming in with guns blazing he coming in with the angels like what's up what's up <laughs> <laughs> Listen, God ain't finna play. When I sat back and I thought about it, and I was like, you know, at first the flesh came out like I was sitting back like God, I ain't did nothing. I ain't, you know, and then I said, Hold up. No, mm-mm. This is flesh. I'm spiritual. It's a difference. It's a difference. See, they're looking from a flesh perspective and they think that I'm going to fall. They think that you're going to fall. But you're looking at it from a spiritual realm saying, God, I give it to you. This fight ain't for me. I'm not even, I, if it's up to me, I'll fold. I don't feel like doing all of that. I'm going to keep my peace. And God said it ain't for you. This battle is for me. This this pre I'm coming pressure behind what's mine. This battle is for me. I want this. And now I'm I'm laughing. I'm like Muhammad Ali in there. Like, yeah. You know how Muhammad Ali like float like a butterfly, seem like a bee. He just up in there like, yeah, I know I'm finna come win this battle. Because yeah, you chose the right one. I'm taking delight in this battle. Yeah, you got the right daddy. Yeah, I've been waiting for this day. I've been waiting for my, my child to tag me in. Yeah, I got this. Listen, it ain't you. It ain't you. This battle ain't yours. You better get that battle to God. I don't care what you're facing. I don't care if you're facing an eviction at the door. God got a beautiful apartment for you getting ready to come. You just got to roll with the punches for a second and watch what he do. I don't care if your car been breaking down. Listen, my car been breaking down on me for the last month. You, I don't care about that. Oh, God go give me a new car. You can break down tomorrow, car. God, God go give me something new. I don't care. Devil, you come at me from every angle. You come at me from every angle out of my new attacks that you're trying to do, devil. I'm not, I'm not studying that. You trying to break me down when God going to build me up. Come on. Listen. God ain't nothing to play with. God ain't nothing to play with. 
God ain't nothing to play with when it comes to his kids. Let that go. That car break down. Leave that mess on the side of the road and call a tow truck to get to. Walk home. And walk home praising God the whole way there. Because that's a spiritual attack. The devil wants you to curse God. Park that car on the side of that road when that bad boy break down. And walk home and say glory to glory to glory to glory to glory to glory to God. Listen, the devil wants you to curse God. When it break down, you keep it going. When they try to evict you, get your thumb. Pack you and your kids stuff up and say thank you. All right, God, what's next? Come on. If he fired me from this job tomorrow, all right, let me pack my desk up and let me walk up out of here. God, I know you got me. Who? God, I know you got me. Man, who?